Hi, my name is Dirk Delahunt, and I decided to build an alarm clock. I'm not exactly Captain Morning, and I normally forget to turn the alarm off on a Friday and back on again on a Sunday. Or I forget to switch it off for a holiday, which is just the second worst way to start the day. As someone who relies on public transport to get to work and back, pushing the doze button for a predetermined, non-configurable 10 minutes doesn't help me much, as buses are half an hour apart, which means I can sleep in, as long as I don't mind waking up to an alarm four times in a morning. So I set out to make an alarm clock that only goes off when I wanted to. While developing this, it became clear that while acting like an alarm clock, the main system revolves around an alarm core that several different inputs post alarm events to. Allow me to demonstrate. This is the main clock view, the default view for when the screen has blanked out. As you can see, it's a very simple view, as all of them are, because when you've just woken up, you don't want to have to decipher the important information from a packed screen. This view is responsible for posting alarm events for predefined wake-up times, which in my case are 7.40, 8.10, and 8.40 during the week, and 9am on the weekend. When choosing to doze by tapping the screen quickly, the next time is automatically selected, scheduling another alarm. Once awake, you could move on to the next view, the calendar view. As you can see, the brief version shows you the current day of the month. This view shows you the date at the top of the screen, along with any events you have planned in your Google Calendar. This view is responsible for notifying you of any events you have planned during the day, and for waking you up if you have any events planned that occur before your first clock alarm event, as I will demo later. If you've created a calendar entry with the word holiday in it, the alarm will be disabled for that day. If you've woken up loving life, you can choose to move on to the news feed. Listed here are the headlines from the BBC site. Clicking on any item brings up more information. Tapping anywhere else on the screen takes you back to the headline view. This view scans headline content for a set of search terms and posts notifications, but not alarms for any of them. In my case, I'm searching them for Armageddon, but surprisingly, none of the headlines have it in today. Moving on to the last view, the weather view. As you can see, the date, wind speed, wind chill, and an icon for the weather conditions are shown. Personally, I'm not too bothered about the weather on the whole, but this view is allowed to wake me up on the weekend at 7 a.m., but only if it's snowing. They didn't bother doing so during the week. Astute viewers may notice my subtle attempt at sucking up by using a background picture of Lake Teho, a different one for sunny and miserable days. Now I'm going to demo the alarm by setting the date and time to more or less 7.29 tomorrow morning, which, if you remember, is 10 minutes earlier than my clock alarm is allowed to wake me up at. However, I have a calendar reminder set for 7.30 to remind me to get up early for a fictional meeting I don't have. So I press this button and wait for time to move on. In a few seconds we should see an alarm notification at the bottom of the screen, listing events in the alarm queue. We should also hear a piercing alarm sound from my third world buzzer. Tapping once quickly dismisses just that alarm. To dismiss further alarms, tap and hold for two seconds. Moving on to the calendar view, we see that the day has changed and it shows the meeting that I had to wake up early for. The settings you have seen have been tailor fitted to suit my lifestyle and routine, but could easily be adjusted to cater for others. That brings my demo to a close. I'm going to speak about .NET Micro for a bit. I entered this competition to force myself to learn .NET as I have very little experience of it. So anything I suggest as a way of making it better that clearly exists already, please excuse me. A problem I appear to be unique in suffering from was lack of documentation, or being pointed at documentation that didn't tell you that the feature you were looking at doesn't exist in .NET Micro. 
Also, I was going to use MSN-related services for my views, but I was struggling enough with the MSN protocol before having to get, try to get HTTPS working. If I had taken the time to read the RFC, I'm sure I could have got away with my own implementation using the existing certificate stuff in .NET Micro. But it'd be nice if HTTPS was made easier. Working with XML was easy enough, but I almost wanted a lax version of the parser, as some feeds had something in them that upset the parser. Related to that, when passing some feeds that weren't compliant, things would just randomly fail. I tried catching the exceptions around opening and reading the XML, but none were raised. At that point, breakpoints were no longer hit, but the program kept running. I did, however, find working with interrupts and low-level hardware to be a breeze, with the whole development experience being straightforward, and I never find myself holding my thumbs when I hit compile and deploy. So yeah, great stuff, and thank you for your time.